Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we continue with the Voyager window launches and people have been urging me to try this Pluto flyby. Uh, they insist that it is a good timing. Uh, well, it is a risk and especially because the duration is not that long. I mean we have to get there pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, 13 years is a little bit tight, so even if we do get an encounter, I don't know if it's going to be in 13 years, I'm not sure, I and mean, it's possible. But, yeah, um, a direct home and transfer to Pluto would take much longer, so it's only even possible with the Jupiter uh, slingshot. And uh, it, it pays well, but the failure is quite bad. 3.2 million would definitely take a chunk out of our budget. Taking a look at our existing uh, contracts, if we fail the Neptune flyby, that's 2.4 million. Uh, we will probably, I mean, unless I unlocked a Nerva, and unless I used a Nerva for... Uh, I, I need radiators to keep the liquid hydrogen fresh, if you will, prevent it from boiling off. Uh, if I really wanted to use the Nerva all the way to Jupiter, so that's a complication. Uh, but basically we're talking about 1.75 million at risk there and 2.2 million let's say at risk there so 2.2 1.8 let's say so that to make the math easier that's four and then so that's 6.4 million there and then we're going to take on an extra risk I mean hopefully we'll be fulfilling them of course but uh, 6.4 million and then we add this risk to it and basically that's the money we've got so but uh, but the, but then again we do get the advance so it, we will have some buffer just in case everything goes wrong but all right uh, let's do it and I've I, I've already queued up an extra ambassador launch so that'll be a backup we'll have to see which one seems to be you know in the best position to do the Pluto thing the first one will definitely do the Uranus and Neptune bit. And it'll only be the two other ones that have a chance at Pluto. Because we do want to prioritize fulfilling the Uranus and Neptune. They're easier. And uh, combined, their penalty is uh, worse than the penalty of the Pluto one. Alright, so that's the plan. We've got a lot of stuff to do. We do have the Mars window up as well in 20 days. So we need to get our timing right, make sure that everything gets launched. And we've got a lot of rockets to handle. Also, we need to worry about our supplies, though at least we've built the rockets for that. We've got two Moonport resupply missions and two Spaceport resupply missions. So back up there. Uh, in the queue, I've also got a crew rotation for each of the stations uh, pending. But we'll finish Mars Base 1 and the Ambassador launch. Um, that Ambassador launch will happen before this uh, sort of... Uh, transfer window planner window to Jupiter so that's good and it's in the second slot once it goes in the first slot it'll be much faster um, somebody had asked me how heavy my Mars base was let me pop back into the VAB and take a look at that okay here we are I, I sort of wonder whether I was saying moon base or Mars base there hopefully I was saying Mars base but anyway um, Mars base including the landing thrusters but not including the heat shield so it's landing directly on this crew cabin, though, with these landing struts like that. Uh, looking at it again, I wonder. But anyway, it's 14 tons almost. Uh, but that's with the fuel. Uh, so if we take out the fuel, and how much is the supply? Uh, I mean, we, we're carrying food, water, and oxygen here. Uh, so it's 12.6, let's say, with the food, water, and oxygen. And the food, water, and oxygen actually is quite a lot. Uh, it's 7 tons without the food, water, and oxygen. So we're talking about 5.5 tons of supplies that we're delivering to the surface as well. Okay, so that is Mars Base 1. Well, we have a lot of launches to choose from, and I think uh, for starters I'm going to go with one of these outer calm ones, just so that we have extra time to fix the other one, should it turn out that there's something wrong with it. So it's nice with these duplicates to send one copy off first, uh, we should probably do uh, MapSat 2 before we do MapSat 2A, for instance. But anyway, uh, this takes three days to roll out for some reason. So probably good to get on with that for that reason, too. Alright, so rolling out it goes. Alright, uh, here we go. 
Well, this is a hefty. Oh, it's bouncing. It's bouncing. Uh, yeah, this is a hefty sort of launch. Not entirely surprising. It takes so long to roll out. Throttle up. SAS is on. Okay. Ignition. Ooh, distance. And launch. Whoa, uh, there's something glitchy. That's glitchy. That's glitchy. Why am I... Why is everything glitching out? Hold on. Um, hold on. Was... Uh, well... Okay, things are being heated by other things. I got that. Hmm. Have we reached the something or another limit? Well, that's just dandy right there. Well, I think I think it's fair to say that that was a glitch, right? That's a glitch, pretty sure. Um, yeah, that 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 that, that that's a glitch. Now, which kraken is it? I do not recognize this particular kraken to this extent, especially since I think we've launched rockets like this before. Um. Down it, we don't have reverts, hold on. Uh, well, I guess I can't do it that way. Can I allow myself to revert here? Yeah, can, can we do that? Revert flight, revert to launch. I, I just wanna see what happens. Now we did time warp to sort of match orbits with the moon. We strictly speaking don't need to do that. Maybe I should avoid that. I don't know if it'll make any difference, but let's experiment. Okay, well, um, our inclination with respect to the moon isn't great, but and it's bouncing again anyway. But let's not correct that. Let's just try and go. It's already started to clock off. I don't know. Those are the right engines, right? All the correct engines, yep. It's doing the thing. Hmm. Did I say it's off? I don't know. Yeah, well. Hmm. There's no way this is gonna work out right. Let me Alt F4 and try and restart the game. Okay, so here we are again with much trepidation. I will attempt this one more time. After this, maybe we should take a peek in the VAB to see if there's anything systematically wrong with this outer comm satellite. Another possibility is just to restart the entire computer. Maybe there's something caught in the, caught in the matrix somehow. Something funny going on. Sometimes a restart helps. Sometimes it helps. Well, bouncy, bouncy again. All right. I, I'm not gonna line up with the moon. I'll just try this. Okay, ignition. And launch. Oh, oh no, I thought it was fine for a sec there. Oh, and we lost an engine. That's interesting. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, well, it's sitting on an engine. So it's not like it's some tenuous structural part. Um, 
I guess that but I mean that doesn't explain all the wiggliness down below and glitching why should anything maybe these guys are too far in I don't think that's been a problem before but generally the wiggliness could be something to do with things that are like colliding with each other of course hmm but everything seems to be fairly regular um, I think I'll just restart my computer and then try try one more time of course it's possible that the one on the launch pad is already glitched beyond belief anyway so there's no rescuing it but let, let me see what I can do I really don't see anything in particular about this setup that I mean it's got the big Saturn instrument unit there it's not got little probe cores anywhere else and really when it glitches everything seems to glitch so that's weird too alright okay so here we go again after a full restart I don't know if this is such a great idea but let's try it I'm, I'm curious I'll, I'll give you that um, definitely not sure it's gonna work okay well that's uh, even more of a bounce than I thought we had before let's wait for it to sell down the clocks already started liquid hydrogen is boiling off I'm oh, sorry not hydrogen oxygen actually the hydrogen is not boiling off interestingly enough okay well here it is we're at 0, 0.0 meters per second ignition Just waiting for some shaking. No. All right, launch. Oh no, it's going. Well, what the heck? All right, all right, all right. Um. Right. Nope. Still no revert. Okay, it's just not. Not willing to go along with that now. All right, fine, space center, I give up. Okay, well, hmm, is it just that rocket? Or is it gonna be every rocket? Well, on the bright side, we have a lot of missions, but still, I don't wanna lose all of them like that. I think we've got a bunch of Mars sample return ones, though. Maybe we could just toss one of those up. It's a little bit early, though, 17 days. Um, that's just a uh, Kerbal Alarm Clock maneuver I think let's see uh, let's try checking out where the Mars transfer really is mm, still in a while ah, it's in 30 days it says here okay well even though that's a uh, good timing on the Mars sample return as far as having a launch pad reconditioned in time we'll try something else these are too short Titan shot is long enough on the rollout. Well, I mean, that's launched before. It's not a new thing. Okay, let's try the Titan shot. Okay, well, this is a more traditional Soyuz ish setup. And. Actually, I. I haven't launched this configuration in a while and I sort of like it. Should do it more often. If it works, uh, we should definitely make a point of that. But for now, uh, well, let's see about the moon. I mean, we're not. Uh, for now, I'm not anticipating any problems with this launch, right? Oh, 2.95, that's not bad. We can definitely do that. That's no problem. Right overhead, too. The moon's right overhead? Somewhere. Okay. So, throttle up. SAS is on and ignition oh that's a heck of a delay and launch please don't shake the world apart please don't shake the world apart all right handing off to smart ASS well this one's looking good so far. Maybe we can just move right along and 
forget all about that outer comm mission. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. No obvious problems. Alright, booster set. Ah, no curl left cross this time, folks. Straight out. Alas. Alright, getting ready for the end of the first stage, and... First stage set. And second stage ignition. So, first stage and the boosters were fine, and now we're on the second stage with four NK-43s. And then the third stage will have the J-2. At this point, I think we can separate our fairings. Uh, tights. Ooh. Oh, no. Bad. How did that ex- Wow. Right. Well, fine. Uh, ignite these guys. I... Let's go to the moon instead. <laughs> I mean, what choice do I have? Okay, uh, the other stuff don't hit me. Um, we probably need to pitch up a lot more if we're going to save this. Or at least get into orbit. Uh, well, the fairings were supposed to be staged around there, but maybe a little bit higher? I don't know, maybe I should have thrown down. Tough to say. Okay, separation. And ignition. Well, this is actually the Voyager 2 launch date. So we are already there. I wonder if I should just um, get past the other outer comm satellite, right? I mean, that's probably going to glitch out too. We could just get rid of that, or maybe we can launch something that'll be more productive. This ExoMoon Explorer, though, is on a really big launcher, Nico 3340, which is even bigger than the one that launched this. So that's problematic, potentially. Um, yeah. So far though, we're uh, 2 for 4 on our launches, and those two were in the previous episode. Well, I guess we'll just have this as a supplementary communications satellite till this to uh, point at active vessel and activate it. It's got RTGs, and then we can extend these communitrons to communicate with any sort of other satellites in orbit or, on the sur or uh, locations on the surface. And we'll just keep this all together. Which means keeping this stage. I don't think we have... We do have some commutrons up here, but let's just maximize that instead of separating off this stage since there's no particularly good reason to do that. And... Done. Alright, well, 307 by 294, or 295 pretty much. And, yeah, well, that's a bust. Let's move on to the next thing, though. Okay, well, here is MapSat 2. Let's see how it is with respect to the moon. I wonder if you can have multiple rockets rolling out at the same time. Sort of like aircraft taxiing to a runway kind of thing. I won't try that right now. It might glitch something. Uh, we will see how this goes. All right, some distance for noise purposes and ignition. And launch. Okay, and switch over to Smart ASS. All right. This time I might be holding on to the fairings for an unusual amount of time. Once bitten, twice twice shy, you know. Definitely 
Don't want the same mistake. Considering it's not at 55 degrees, it's sure not using much of the yaw control, huh? That's a bit weird. I think I do want to make sure we ignite the core first before separating off the boosters. So far, the core has not been lit on this rocket. Okay, ignition. Ah, those are J2s. Oh, I should have started those off a little earlier. Oh, that's a mistake of mine. Those should have definitely been started earlier. Okay, separation. And, well, I mean, it's not bad. It's 0.87 Gs. That's basically what the second stage of Saturn V started out at, and we're higher with plenty of extra time to apoapsis. Saturn V had a minute and 40 seconds to apoapsis when it started its second stage. So we have more, and we basically start out with the same G-force, the same acceleration. So, not horrible. I think I do need to try and separate those fairings at this point, actually. We're gonna be making orbit with this stage. Well, we're close to making orbit with this stage. Alright, well, let's risk it. We're in space, so hopefully it's alright. Uh, okay, barely. Um, probably this stage is going to re-enter and we'll have to finish up with uh, the upper stage. Uh, so close. I probably should have been able to make orbit with this. Alright, separation. Yeah, potentially this ignition wasn't necessary. 295 by 203. Alright, uh, let's see, what does MechJeb have as far as a transfer to Jupiter? And hopefully we can get into orbit around... Well, MechJeb kept trying for a really fast transfer, uh, such that we were going very fast when we reached Jupiter and had trouble making orbit around the moons. So I might correct whatever it decides to try and give me. Well, sort of an annoying thing. Uh, we've got a Europa encounter there, but it's sure not going to help us get into orbit around Jupiter, I mean, or around Europa. Let me just verify that that's just not going to be doable and that's too weird uh, an approach to make that happen. Well, as you can see, pulling retrograde a whole lot in Europa SOI is not getting us anywhere. Let's see, where will we add on that one? 4,000? Yeah, it doesn't look like this is going to help, is it? Nope. Okay, so we have to do this properly. Which means we can't really uh, encounter it there. That's not the right place. I think Europa would be a nice one to go for, but this is not the way to do it. Okay, so that's roughly matching orbits with Europa there. A bit of an inclination problem, but it's a good estimate. And 7,000. Uh, well, after this stage, we've got 6,400 it looks like. We might have a little bit in the probe itself. Let me just quickly take a look. But I'm not feeling like uh, that's a... Uh, well, it would be counting this already. I think all of the Delta V is being counted down there. Hmm. Well, we might have to send the MAPSAT 2A to Europa. That's a little bit tough. Looking pretty good. We've got, uh, yeah, we, we've got some encounter possibilities. But we just need an estimate. And that's a good enough estimate. 5,583. That we can do. And in fact, if we could just get that right there is 4,845. And then, well, let's say we try and make orbit here, even though it's a little bit high. That's quick enough, and that's only 600. So that's doable. Let's try Callisto. And I'm even going to rename this now. 
instead of uh, calling it mapsat2, we'll just call this Callisto mapsat. Okay. Whoa, 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 too far, too far. But it uh, looks good. Uh, settle fuel down and ignition. All right. Well, hopefully we're not too late on that burn. Okay, we we're about to shut down, and timing was not too bad, so hopefully we're still in line. We will adjust using the RCS thrusters. Let's just keep it stable. shut down 10 meters per second left let's see where we're at we're going the wrong way around aren't we dang it okay hold on <sighs> this is clockwise that's the wrong way around okay we have a correction burn here and I'll relight the J2 in order to perform it if it's final relight. Okay, let's see. Hopefully that takes care of it. Uh, a little bit too far. Oh, I think we've run out of RCS fuel on this stage. Ooh, come on. Okay. All right, let me just double check. Yeah, they're all out. All right, well, probably all we need is a little push from the decoupling anyway. Let me unlock this fuel and separate. Whoa, bit of a spin. We were not supposed to be spin stabilized. And this is needlessly using RCS, so let's just stop using that right now. And let's see our situation. It looks okay, our approach to Callisto. Look at that. Uh, pretty close to tangency. We can easily correct in Jupiter SOI. So let's just make a node here. And we'll do any fine tuning right there. Add the alarm. Okay, and this is on its way. So we will hopefully have a mapping satellite around Callisto. That's a start. Um, let's see if I can do one more launch uh, right here and I'll have to take a look at the build list to see what we can do. Alright, back on the launch pad with a Mars sample return mission. So head for Mars and we will see if everything works alright so that if necessary we can do edits of the other two Mars sample return missions. If everything works alright with this, those two will be sent to Phobos and Deimos. We will go as is. Everything seems to be okay. Ignition. And launch. Uh, okay, we seem to have boosters out a little bit early. Um, there was a fuel imbalance. Let's separate. Oh, oh, except for that one. Hmm, well, I know what we have to fix here. Yep, alright, hold on. Let's see. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. So that was weird. You know what I figure it is? Uh, it might have been like a utilization change and sometimes that doesn't go through all the symmetries. Uh, so one, I changed uh, fuel in one of the boosters but it didn't get symmetrized. Something like that. Well, this doesn't have much thrust weight rate. Well, we've been here before. We could still send it somewhere interesting, I think. 15,000 meters per second. 
maybe we could send this to to land on Phobos. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what it can do. Let's just try and save it for now. Okay, we are about to make orbit here again. Not the way I intended to, but there we go. 243 by 230. And we've got 500 meters per second left here. I'm pretty sure this was supposed to, like, do most of our burn to Mars. But it still says we've got 8,000 meters per second. Now, you have to keep in mind that in order to do Mars sample return, uh, you need to get to Mars, and then you need to land, which is about 400 using the parachutes as well, and then take off again, which is 4,200, and then transfer back home, which is about, uh, so that was 4,200 and 2,400, so you're talking about 7,000. And so we're definitely not doing that anymore because we need 4,000 just to get there. So it's 4,000 to get there and then 7,000 to do the whole sample return thing uh, from the surface of Mars. And, and then that's including aero capture using the heat shield and landing with the parachutes. So yeah, we're about 3,000 short of that. But we'll see what we can do. We'll, we should be able to land this on the surface if that's what we want to do. Or we could try for Deimos or Phobos and see what happens there. But let me plot it out. Alright, tough to say when exactly we should start, but I think this is a good time because we've got this stage. This is an awkward sort of situation with this stage because it only has 500 meters per second. It was just supposed to do minor adjustments, uh, but we might want to pump the fuel from this into that because I think the Asterisk 2 has marginally better ISP. I forget. Uh, well, it probably has better efficiency anyway because these advanced Gemini lander engines are sort of tilted outward. So we, I mean, maybe we don't want to use those. On the other hand, the fuel mixture for the Gemini lander engines is different than for the Asterisk 2, so that may lead to inefficiency. Tough to balance all that out. Anyway, uh, RCS on, and selling the fuel down. Still says unstable, now it says stable. Okay, ignition. One thing I do know is we will be dumping this stage. At least there's that. Technically these solar panels are only important for for this go around stage, so yeah. I think just the one solar panel on the probe is good enough for everything else. It would have to be because it has to come back on its own. Okay, well given the stage timing we probably should have started this way earlier. Okay, and... Hey, oh, come on. Sad that we had to waste those solar panels, but best not to carry the extra weight around. You can see the 7,000 meters per second here. Uh, we seem to have a residual roll. I'm gonna run with that for now. Clearly the little Gemini lander engines weren't put exactly as they should have been on this probe. But we've got plenty of problems as it is. Hopefully the rotation isn't gonna kill this thing. We'll see. It's an experiment. It's an experiment. Oh heck, I'll let the RCS try and counter it. It doesn't seem to help, really. The RCS just seems to make it worse. Okay, but physical time war is probably a bad idea. I saw parts sort of flying away from the body. Uh, we'll keep it to there. It's still a little bit dodgy, you can see. I get a feeling that we're actually pretty far off. Let's see. We do want to keep the heat shield, otherwise we're not going to be able to air brake there. Well, it's going to cost a lot to correct this mess. Um, and then there's this sort of situation. Okay. 
Uh, yep, I think that's it. All right. Well, at least we might be able to make this a lander. We'll see. It is on its way. We can, um, let's make a dummy maneuver in Mars SOI. And we will check up on it at the appropriate time. Well, that was a very complicated episode. More complicated than I intended it for it to be, but hey, that happens in Kerbal Space Program. So, on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.